Hey everyone, this is Dimitri Pergamonic with MarketChameleon.com. In this video, we're going to go over an example of a double calendar option strategy. We're going to talk about how to set it up, what are the goals or objectives of this strategy, and what are the risks of that strategy. And let's use SPY in this example. I'm going to go down here to the options chain, and we're going to set up the four different legs of the option strategy and then run a payoff diagram. So let's start out with the first part is we need to uh, establish a calendar spread. Um, so let's start out on one month, October 20th, and SPY right now is around 424. So let's do a put spread first. We're going to go down to the 415 strike, and we're going to sell a put. This is an out of the money put on October 20th. And then, just like the name suggests, we're going to do a calendar spread or a time spread. And we're going to come out to a different expiration further out. Let's go to November 17th. And then we're going to purchase a put on the same strike. So we're going to find the 415 put and purchase that put. So you could see here, these are the first two legs of the strategy. We're selling the 415 put on October 20th and then buying the 415 put November 17th. And this will look like this at expiration. You can see this is the payout diagram. And if you notice that it does have a bearish bias, the stock is right here. So this line shows us where the stock is currently. And since we uh, established this spread on lower strikes, then the spread peaks right there, right at the strike. So that's why it has a bearish bias. Um, that's your sweet spot. If the stock expires exactly at 415, then this option that you sold will expire worthless. So you get to keep all that credit. And then at that, and then the next option will still have premium. And since it's at the money, that's where the time premium is the most when it's at the money. So that's your sweet spot right there. The other thing, if you notice, is that you are long vega. You want implied volatility to go up. The reason for that is that a longer dated option always has a higher vega than the shorter dated option. So in this situation, you're long vega. Um, so here we see we have a stock bias and an implied volatility or vega bias. But let's now create another calendar spread um, on different strikes. And what we want to do here is to fill in or expand this green area here to more, more stock prices, okay, going to the upside. So what we're going to do is now do a call calendar spread, all right, but on the same expirations. So let's go back to the first expiration, October 20th. We're going to go to October 20th, and we're going to find a strike that's above above this curtain at the monies. So let's go up to the four, let's do the 435 strike. So I'm going to, we're going to sell the call on the 435 strike, as so, and then we're going to go to November 17th, and then we're going to buy the call on the 435 strike on November 17th. So I'm clicking on there. And now we should have all the four legs here below. This is the initial calendar spread, selling the October 415 put, buying the November 17th 415 put. And then we went back to October 20th, sold the 435 call, and then bought November 17th 435 call. And now we're going to run this payout diagram. This is what it looked like before. Now we're going to run this payout diagram, calculate it. And now you could see that that green area expanded. Now we cover more stock prices. And the reason behind it is that we want the, the stock to finish in between the strikes because that's where, or right at the strikes, because that's where both the October 20th uh, options will expire worthless, right? They'll be out of the money because 
if the stock is in between 415 and 435, then the 435 call will expire worthless and 415 put will expire worthless. And then you have the November 17 put and November 17 call that still has time value because it has time to go. And also you're long Vega. So you want the implied volatility to move up. So here your objective is that the stock stays in between the strikes in that range and for implied volatility to tick up. So your, your outlook is that the stock will kind of trade around that range, but the implied volatility is low. And if it reverts back to your target price, then this uh, option spread uh, stands to benefit. And we could even increase those implied volatilities just to take a look. And let's say the implied volatilities move up. So we could we could we could change them over here so you could see they all changed over here and then let's recalculate that and you could see if the implied volatilities go up then so does this green area which shows your profitability to the left all right everyone hope you guys like this video and hope to see you guys next time thanks